So, when I started writing this script about a year ago, it started as a basic rundown of the plot and gameplay of Persona 5, and ultimately just came at a bad time in my life when I was in the process of making big life decisions. I didn't want this to become another cookie cutter video of a topic that's been done to death already, so I scrapped it. Today I want to tell a personal story. A Persona story. This is Persona 5 and the inevitability of the end. It's showtime! Like I was saying, I was in a completely different place than I am now. It was April of 2019, Joker was about to release his DLC character number one in the Super Smash Bros. Fighter Pass, and me being the eager gamer I am, felt that I needed to play the source material to truly respect Sakurai's implementation of Persona and Smash. Thus, I waited for a sale to pop up for Persona 5, and wouldn't you know it, after months of waiting, the price finally dropped after Persona 5 Royal's inevitable release inched its way closer and closer. Even with a superior enhanced version on the horizon, I knew it would be too long of a wait, and thus I I said fuck it, and began an adventure that I would connect with far more than I could have ever imagined. Here's a quick synopsis. You're Ren Amamiya, the protagonist. After an unfortunate altercation in which you defend a helpless woman from a drunk political figure, you're forced to move away, with your family disassociating themselves with you and your edgy troublemaker self. And thus, it's time to begin the game. Everyone hates you and your phone's got a virus, and oh shit, it's a trippy virus. Now you and your only friend at the new abusive corrupt whiplash school are finding yourselves not at school anymore. It's fourth period gym pervert Mr. Kamashita sex dungeon, and you gotta beat him off with the power of your persona. You following along? Great. A couple days go by and the hot girl in class that Kamashita is in a very inappropriate relationship with ends up in the palace as well now and lit, she's joined your party. Also there's a cat. You all rise up to the occasion and scream sequence like Goku in order to beat Kamashita and make him confess his sins on national TV. And thus you and your crew have cemented yourselves as the Phantom Thieves, a band of traumatized youth and a cat who will stop at nothing to make corrupt adults confess their sins. Like it's like Bible but anime. The Bible anime. I skipped a lot of shit because basically you gotta keep up social media media presence, make it to your job, hang up with friends, play games, get fucking good, just shit in general, all while the in-game clock ticks away and your story and progression as a character, as a player, and as a person wrap up in a bow. And now, with that verbal fountain of shit out of the way, you sort of get the gist of this big convoluted anime adventure. So how does this connect with me? Have I been traumatized in my life? Am I an epic, edgy anime protagonist? Well no, but I still connect in several ways, so let me babble on for a couple of minutes. I'm counting on you. Don't worry, I'm hyped about this too. At the end of the palace, you have a party of four, and thus, you've made your first two of school friends, Ryuji and Anne. And over the course of the game, you just add person after person, and there's this integral gameplay system, the confidant system. When you spend more time with each character, you learn more about their character and their beliefs. By the end of the game, you get to know and love these characters like you've known them your entire life. Growing up, I didn't have a consistent friend group. I had and still do have friends that I was close to in elementary school. However, when I got into high school, I met person after person depending on classes and who I already knew. And though I transitioned through groups, I ended up placing myself in a group that was a mix of friends that I had known since kindergarten to just that year. And by the end of the year, the group sort of divided as couples broke up and meh, just high school shit. By the end of my grade 11 year, my friend group had transformed to a tight group that understood each other better than anyone else. And though we all have our own interests, we all believe in living happy lives, where we are successful and free to do what our own will wants. And that's the theming of the Phantom Thieves as a whole. In the end, I found that the connection that I had with the Phantom Thieves was so similar to my friends in the real world, I couldn't disassociate my friends in real life from the ones in game. I'm just kidding, that's fucking cringe, I'm sorry. That never happened. But the fact still remains that the bonds I've made with friends out of basically fucking nothing has never manifested itself in a game like it did in Persona 5. And that was truly remarkable. I'll return to the topic of friends in a bit, but for now I gotta talk about another type of bond. No age. And I ain't talking about ropes. Relationships. That was tight. Tight? I'm doing this for art. That girl just now? Don't you think she was fine? I just have too many bitches. Do I pick sexy goth doctor who is definitely drugging me and doing unspeakable things to my body? Or the overachieving good girl, maybe the best girl? The chill cute girl who takes some time to open up? Oh, uh, no, that didn't sound right. Mm. The gamer girl who was like a sister? No. The teacher? I went with the teacher. This might be hard to believe, but I'm not a super desirable guy. I'm not really trying to get intimate with every single woman I meet, which you are pretty much free to do in game, but uh... Look, truth is, it's kind of fucking fan service, and you can get intimate with your hot milker mommy teacher, and it's the path I chose and I have no regrets. It's kind of a weird topic, but in the process of playing this game, I actually got in a relationship. I got in a relationship with my old boss. Still, love prevails. 
And no, not my old teacher, though that would be neat. I don't know, I, I just kind of find it interesting that I had this parallel with this game. I mean, at the exact same time that I was playing it too is when we started seeing each other. So it just seemed so fitting, like, how, you know? And to be honest, that's kind of the whole reason why I started making this video was because when this happened, I just thought, I, I should, should write, write about this. I guess the other thing I'd bring up is sometimes you have to choose between people. I mean, obviously you can just go with whatever, but for me personally, in my play style, I didn't want to break anyone's heart and that was hard. And it's hard like that in real life. I know I said I'm not a desirable guy, but sometimes you have the choice of going after someone. You just have to know when it's right. Let's get a little existential. Now, in real life, and you can ask anyone who knows me, I'm not the best with time management. I will show up more than fashionably late. If showing up 10 minutes late is fashionable, then I'm seal of green at the red carpet. So being the way I am, and having fucking life to juggle, work, social life, games, music, art, videos that take me years to make, cooking, actually succeeding at doing any of said things is fucking insane to me. And I kick my ass a lot for it. Persona really respects your time, I'd say. Seeing as it's a hundred plus hour game, it kicks your ass in gear and tells you to go to bed and you wake up and it's time to make choices. What will you do? Eat Fortnite burger, bang your teacher, Let's do or it. just go the fuck back to bed and say fuck it, tomorrow's a new day. It genuinely made me look at each day in the real world differently because I'm not limited to what you can do in game, that being one task each set time of the day. Unlocking nightlife after the first month in game, I learned that I could actually do shit when I got home from work and to go socialize when I got the chance, especially seeing as I had a new life event on the horizon. Oh, also spoilers for the end of the game here. The game suddenly turns super meta and it turns out that you're actually literally a part of a game and that social presence you've been trying to keep up actually has a greater purpose at the end of the game where everyone needs to believe in the Phantom Thieves in order to stand a chance against the Chalice and then the giant god. I just like the idea that you were literally running out of time and the threat of the world is in your hands to stop and you need everyone to believe in you in order to overcome it. It's like the end of Elf. Yeah, very original, guys. I don't have a personal connection with this. I just like that you have a greater cause, and the time you spend in every little activity is warranted. It made me think a little differently about the time I spend with my friends in the real world. Definitely stop flaking as much after playing this game. Really gotta treat every moment that you have with friends and family as if the fate of the world could be in your hands, and you might not ever see each other again. So after beating the final boss, there's sort of a time skip. Even though you saved the world, you still have to spend Christmas in jail because entering the subconscious of people is technically illegal. You get out, celebrate Valentine's Day, that can go very differently depending on who you choose to bang, or how many you choose to bang, and ah damn, the story is done. It seriously is bittersweet though. All these friends you've become attached to, you gotta say goodbye to. Cause in the 117 hours I spent getting to know these people, I forgot I'm not from here. Like literally, Ren isn't from here and these things don't last forever. The months after playing this game, I made a huge life decision to move away from home, across mountains to a place where I knew no one, in hopes that I could find myself, make something of my own. It was by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Where Persona 5 fits into this is that it's not easy to say goodbye to what's become home. Friends, family, your cat, but you keep in touch and even when everything's said and done, it isn't ever really over. I can still revisit Persona 5 anytime, and the music, gameplay, characters, moments that I love, and the same is true for real life. I visited home multiple times and had friends and family visit me. I returned to music that we fell in love with together, while still remembering how those friends and family helped me become who I am too. And I've done it! I built friendships out here, far from home, that will last a lifetime. These people I've introduced into my life are once again having that Persona 5 effect. We were complete strangers and I'm invested now. But once again, now in 2020, at the time of writing this at least, I'm seeing myself in the same position I put myself in last year. The game is coming to an end, and at the time of writing this, I'm coming back home. I've gotten to a serious relationship and I'm returning and this is kind of a perfect analogy because the inevitability of the end is far scarier than the end itself, but there's always a new beginning ahead. Since playing Persona 5 in 2019, they've released Persona 5 Royal, and I've purchased it and I haven't even touched it. It's really cool that in the same instance I'll be returning to this game with these characters that I know so well, and we get to catch up and make new memories, I'll do the same with my friends and family in real life. It might be cringy to people who don't play video games like I do, but I think that art is profound and video games as an art form especially can give us moments and experiences like no other art form, where music can remind you of a special moment or place, or create emotion even, and TV and film can make us get attached to characters and stories similarly, video games have you in control. You get to get attached as you go and make memories. It's your experience. This guy right here, he's you. And just like him, you can do anything. I found that out myself. 
Some games may play like a movie, lasting you 4 to 40 hours. Some are competitive. Some are just plain fun and test your skills. There are so many interesting ways you can connect with a video game, but no other video game has connected with me on a deep personal level, all while entertaining me and has been such a worthwhile time sink that it's had me ready to come back for more, quite like Persona 5. I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching this whole video through. It is literally two years in the making. Be sure to let me know in the comments if Persona 5 had a similar effect on you. If you haven't played it, will you give it a shot now that you've seen my video? And if you can, please subscribe. Expect more videos like this from me in the future. Peace.